Hi guys, welcome to lesson 9-4, factoring to solve quadratic functions. Our objective for this lesson is that I can solve quadratic functions by factoring. Our essential understanding is that we can solve some quadratic fun equations, including equations where b is not equal to zero, by using the zero product property. What is the zero product property? Well, it simply says that if you have two real numbers, a and b, if a times b is equal to zero, then either a is equal to zero or b is equal to zero. So in our application, when we look at an equation, if x plus three times the quantity x plus two is equal to zero, well then either x plus three is zero or x plus two is zero, because one of those two terms would have to be zero. So that is why our um, standard form of a quadratic is setting things equal to zero. So using the zero product property, we have uh, some equations here. We've got x plus one and x minus five is equal to zero. And I want to figure out what are my, um, what are my solutions here. So I know that it could either be x plus one equals zero or x minus five that's equal to zero. Well, x plus one equals zero, subtract one, subtract one, x equals negative one. Add five, add five, x could equal five. So your two solutions are five and negative one. Remember, the solutions to a, uh, cis, or sorry, our solutions to a quadratic function are the x-intercepts, where we cross the x-axis, okay? So we have another example, letter B here, where we have 2x plus 3, set that equal to 0, and x minus 4, set that equal to 0. So we subtract 3, 2x equals negative 3, divide by 2, divide by 2, x equals negative 3 halves. Or you could write negative 1.5, either way. Uh, add 4, add 4, x is equal to positive 4. So your two solutions for this one are positive 4 and negative 3 halves. Okay, so let's move on to letter C. The quantity 2y plus 1, so we separate that, 2y plus 1 equals 0, and y plus 14 equals 0. Subtract 1, 2y equals negative 1, divide by 2, y equals negative 1 half. Minus 14, minus 14, y, sorry, yeah, y is equal to negative 14. Okay? All right, I want you guys to try letters D, D, and D. Uh, on your own and we will go over them. I will go over them. So y minus seven, y minus nine, separated it into two equations, y minus seven equals zero, y minus nine equals zero, add seven, y is equal to positive seven, add nine, y equals nine. So this is why we did all of that factoring stuff that I know you guys loved so much. All right, letter D, 2x plus 4 and x minus 1. So 2x plus 4 equals 0, x minus 1 equals 0. Add 1, add 1, x equals 1. Subtract 4, 2x equals negative 4. Divide by 2, divide by 2, x equals negative 2. So those are your two solutions, negative 2 and positive 1. Okay. 7n minus 2 equals 0, 5n minus 4 equals 0. Add 2, 7n equals 2, divide by 7, n equals 2 over 7. Leave it as a fraction. Add 4, add 4, 5n equals 4, divide by 5, n equals 4 fifths. Okay, so I mean, clearly 
we taught you how to factor so that you could be able to factor your own uh, equations, and I don't have to necessarily give it to you already in factored form. Haha, -ha, Mr. Boland is mean. Uh, m squared minus 5m minus 14. So I'm looking for products of negative 14 that add up to negative 5. Well, I could do um, positive 2 and negative 7. Negative 2, or sorry, positive 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. And 2, negative, no, sorry, 2 plus negative 5, 7 is negative 5. So we have m plus 2, m minus 7. Okay, so when we do that work, uh, m plus 2 equals 0, m minus 7 equals 0, minus 2, minus 2, m equals negative 2, plus 7, plus 7, m equals 7. All right, letter B, x squared plus x minus 20, factors of negative 20, 5 and negative 4, uh, and this needs to be positive, so that's what it's going to be, x plus 5, x minus 4. Okay, so now my two solutions, well, I can just kind of start looking at that and seeing as it's a one step. x is going to be equal to negative 5, x equals 4. I'm just looking to see what's going to make each of those terms 0. Okay. Now, I want you guys to try letter C on your own, where you're going to have to factor using box method. Yay! So I'm looking for factors of eight times, 18 times 2, which is 36, that add up to negative 15. And that's going to be negative 3 and 12. Negative 3 and negative 12 add up to negative 15. So we do our box. We have 2a squared, we have 18, we have minus 3a, minus 12a. So 3 and 18, we have a negative 3 is a common factor. Uh, 12a, negative 12a and 2a, we've got a 2a as a common factor. Over here, we just have an a as a common factor, and there's a negative 6 as a common factor. So we have 2a minus 3 and a minus 6. Those are my two factors. Well, a minus 6, so that's going to be a equals positive 6. That's going to be one of our solutions. And 2a minus 3, so we're going to do 2a minus 3 equals 0. Add 3, 2a equals 3. So then our other term is a equals 3 halves. Okay? All right. Well, let's move on to problem number three. And in problem number three, we need to first write each of these equations in standard form because they're not there yet. So for the first problem, we're just going to add 49 to both sides. So we have x squared plus 14x plus 49 equals 0. When you factor that, hmm, perfect square, perfect square, two times each of the factors, we have x plus 7 squared is equal to 0. So then x is just going to equal negative 7. So this is a case where there is only one solution for this equation, and it's negative 7, which that'll just happen to be the vertex on that one. So maybe when you'll notice, if it's a perfect square trinomial, uh, you're only going to have one possible solution. OK? All right, letter B. Uh, let's try this one. We've got 3x squared plus 13x equals negative 4. So we're going to add 4 to both sides of our equation. 3x squared plus 13x plus 4 equals 0. And factor that. We're looking for factors of 12 that add up to 13. Well, that's easy. 
draw our box, we've got 3x squared, we have 4, we have 12x, and we have x. So factor, common factors, we have a 4, we have an x, 3x, and a 1. So 3x plus 1 equals 0, x plus 4 equals 0. So minus 1, minus 1, 3x equals negative 1, divide by 3, divide by 3, x equals negative 1 third. Minus 4, minus 4, x equals negative 4. Those are your two solutions. Why don't you guys try letter C and D on your own and then I will go over them. So letter C, we have x, 8x squared minus 3x. So we're going to add 3x to both sides. Not like terms, so we can't combine them. 8x squared plus 3x equals 0. Well, it looks like I have a GCF that I can factor out of that, and it's going to be an x. So we have x times 8x plus 3 equals 0. So now my two factors on that are going to be x equals 0, right? Because if x is 0, this is 0. And 8x plus 3, subtract 3 from both sides and divide by 8, x equals negative 3 eighths. Okay. Why do quadratic equations of the form x squared plus 2ax plus a squared equals 0? or x squared minus 2ax plus a squared equals 0 have only one real number solution? Well, because if we were to factor them, we have x plus a squared equals 0 or x minus a squared equals 0. They're perfect square trinomials, so that means there's only one, you know, you only have one factor. You know, you have two, uh, two equations or two terms that are the same thing, so they're going to have the same factor. Um, so on questions like these, your vertex is actually going to be what is on the x-axis. So your uh, solution for a problem like this is going to be your vertex. All right, problem four, using the factoring to solve a real world problem. So you are constructing a frame for the rectangular photo shown. You want the frame to be the same width all the way around and the total area of the frame and the photo will be 315 square inches. What are the outer dimensions of the frame? All right, so let's see. We've got uh, our width of our picture is 11 by 17, but then we have this x and this x width of the frame. So one side of our frame is 2x plus 17. The other side of our frame is 2x plus 11. And we want our area to be 315 square inches. All right, so we've got all of that. Now we need to distribute and FOIL. So we're going to get 4x squared plus 34x plus 22x plus 187 equals, that's 187 equals 315. Combine like terms in the middle here. So we have 4x squared plus 56x plus 187 is equal to 315. Is this in standard form yet? I don't think so. Minus 315, minus 315. So 4x squared plus 56x minus 128 equals 0. Well, that would be some fun factoring if we had to factor a 4 or 4 times negative 20, 128. Fortunately, when I'm paying attention to this, I notice that all three of these are divisible by 4. So we're going to factor out a greatest common factor of 4, and I got x squared minus 14x minus 32 is equal to 0. Well, that's much more manageable, factoring negative 32 factors uh, that are going to add up to negative 14. Well, that's 
32, you can divide that in half, and that would be 2 and 16. Uh, and one of them has to be negative, and it's going to be the bigger one. So it'll be 4 times the quantity x minus 2. And, sorry, x plus 2 and x minus 16. Wait, how did I get a minus? I screwed that up. It's a plus 14. So this is minus 2 and plus 16 equals 0. So now my two dimensions, we're going to add 2 to both sides. So x could be 2, subtract 16 from both sides, or x could be negative 16. Well, um, which one of those is a reasonable answer for the width of a photo frame? Positive 2 or negative 16? It's going to be positive 2. And don't forget your units. So it'll be positive 2 inches all the way around. Okay? And we can double check that math if we want because if our frame is 11 by 17 for the picture plus 2 inches on either side, so that would be 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So it would be 15 times 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 15 times 21 equals 315 square inches that we started with. Okay, So we can always check our work. All right, next problem. What if the total area of the frame and the photo was 391 square inches instead? What would the outer dimensions of the frame be? Everything else is the same. So I'm going to just start with um, my distributed form because uh, it's still going to be 2 times whatever the width of the frame is plus 17 and 2 times the width of the frame plus 11. So we're just going to start at that point where we've already distributed. So we have 4x squared plus 56x plus 187 is equal to, in this case, 391. Okay. So now our next step is going to be to subtract the, that 391 from both sides. So we get 4x squared plus 56x minus 204 is equal to 0. Well, hey, conveniently enough, this is another one where we can just factor out a constant GCF of 4. So we're left with x squared plus 14x minus 51 is equal to 0. So we're looking for factors of negative 51 that add up to 14. Well, I'm going to just guess that we can divide that by a 3. And we can. So we have 4 on the outside. Uh, we have x minus 3 and x plus 17 is equal to 0. Okay. So your two factors, x minus 3 equals 0, add 3 to both sides. So x equals 3. x plus 17, subtract 17 from both sides and x equals negative 17. Which of these is the reasonable dimension for the photo frame? It'll be the 3 inches because we can't have a negative dimension on the frame. Okay. So last problem. Jason has a patio of uniform width around the perimeter of his rectangular pool. The pool is 22 by 12 feet. If the area of the pool and the patio is 504 square feet, what is the width of the patio? So we're going to do the same thing. We have the two sides of the patio plus the 22 foot length of the pool plus the two sides of the patio plus the 12 foot width of the pool is equal to the 504 square feet of the pool. All right, when we distribute, we have 4x squared plus 24x plus 44x plus 264 equals 504. Combine like terms in the middle there, and we got 4x squared plus 24, or sorry, plus 68x plus 264 equals 504. Looks like we could probably pull a GCF of 4 out of this. So we have 4 times the quantity x squared 
plus 17x minus 60 equals, oops, I skipped a step. Ignore that. That is a preview of a step to follow. So we're going to subtract 504 from both sides. And we get 4x squared plus 68x minus 240 equals 0. Now we can pull out that GCF of 4x uh, 4. So we have 4 times x squared plus 17x minus 60 equals 0. So we're looking for factors of negative 60 that add up to 17. Well, I can divide 60 by 3, and that's 20. So if I have a positive 20 and a negative 3, that'll give me negative or positive 17. So we have x plus 20 and x minus 3. So now if we go through and we do our uh, two splits, zero product property, x, oops, x plus 20 equals 0. So x equals negative 20. x minus 3 equals 0. Add 3 to both sides. x equals 3. And our units are in square feet. So it's 3 feet. That's our solution. Okay. All right. Last page is your level of understanding. Make sure you write down what your level of understanding is and identify any questions or confusions you may have on this lesson. Also, write a summary of how we can use factoring in order to find the solutions of our quadratic equations. That is all for the notes for today. Have a good night.